that becoming a bigger chunk of your business going ahead the global markets the you know the that part of the business as opposed to the domestic market very clearly i think um, I, and i want to make this very clear uh, my domestic market is india and europe now okay because we have 2500 people in uh, uh, in europe they're part of the apollo family we have around 10 to 12000 people in india uh so these two markets become our home grown markets right so we'll keep concentrating on our domestic markets which are these two so india is our main market and europe we will keep on focusing in terms of brands in in terms of technology and in terms of what we bring to the end customer and that's very very important i think europe today we we do need more uh tires more products in the market because our demand uh, our demand for our tires is there uh, we are today selling to the top oems in india mm -hmm. and we are now looking at selling to the oems in europe we do sell fredestein brands to the oems in europe but i think now the apollo brand also is going to be introduced to the oes in in europe so now uh, what we are looking at is setting up a new manufacturing greenfield uh, uh Uh, site either in uh, Hungary or in Slovakia. Okay. These are the two East European countries that Apollo today is looking at to setting up a base there because you know we have the highway in terms of we have the distribution network ready. Uh, we just need to put in more tires into that distribution network. And it's better for us the philosophy is very clear that we need near sourcing facilities to Uh, uh uh to uh, uh give tires to our, pro our customers and because freight is very expensive so one needs to put our manufacturing facilities closer to the customer closer to the markets closer to the OEMs and that's our strategy going forward okay you've also clearly mentioned that acquisitions will continue to remain a part of your strategy um of course you know we'll we'll talk about cooper in a moment but <laughs> You're like, I know you are saying you're probably thinking how long before that came up, <laughs> but uh, but you have said that it it is clearly going to continue to be a part of your strategy. So, um, is that something that you're going to put on the back burner for a while in the near term until perhaps you know the Cooper deal uh, fallout subsides or until you know legal things are sorted out, or is that something you're constantly looking at even now? Not really. I don't. I don't see myself. Uh putting anything on hold um uh, i think cooper experience has been excellent uh, it's given us a lot of exposure it's given us a lot of uh, understanding uh, on world markets and on especially in us mm -hmm. uh, the legal system it's given me a lot of experience uh, and i'm not shying away from inorganic growth i'm very clear with that uh, but then again i'm very cautious of what i'm going to go and look at um we are not trying away from acquisitions and this company is built on uh do you feel that it's important uh, acquisitions or inorganic growth continues to be important to the company's it, it growth it is as important as organic right. uh, i would not say inorganic organic and they both have a very different strategy uh inorganic could leap me 5 years ahead in in no time whereas an organic will take time because tire plants to put up takes minimum 24 months to 30 months so your two and a half years are really gone by yeah. whereas uh, you can uh, leap frog straight away when you get a inorganic growth provided the inorganic growth has a very clear synergy case with your company and 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 these are three or four things in the synergies that i look at or the team looks at one is clearly it's giving me a global footprint mm -hmm. so where i'm not available it's giving me and there's no clash of my regions second is it gives me a wider spread of products uh, so maybe some products i'm not in uh, and 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 we can do with new products why not uh, the third is obviously it should give me some brand it, if it doesn't give me brand then is it giving me technology and lastly is there a talent pool coming along with it okay So these are the three or four things that I would look at, and and if then after going through these uh, key uh, assumptions, if it meets my criteria, then we would look at uh, an M&A, 
So it's not that one is important and the other is not. I'm doing both. I'm looking at, as I mentioned to you, Eastern Europe. I'll continue that. And yes, inorganic is something where uh, you can never tell. And it was an ambitious uh, step. You almost did become uh, seventh, the seventh biggest uh, mm -hmm. in the world. For you personally, uh, you know, despite what the detractors were saying about taking on so much debt and so forth, I mean, you definitely saw the synergies in the deal. For you personally, how disappointing has it been that it wasn't able to go through? Well, I think uh, to an extent it is disappointing because two years of our uh, energies and time went into it. And uh, frankly speaking, this is what I said earlier and I still hold on to it, that it you can't get a better strategic fit for both Cooper and for Apollo uh, because it takes you straight away into the top league and you uh, enter the world markets. So you get the US, you get China, you get India, you get Europe, you get Africa. What more do you want? And you get South America. Other than Japan, you get everything, right? So it's a best fit even for the Cooper shareholder and for the Apollo shareholder. I being, or the family being, uh, the main shareholder of Apollo, uh, we have a very long-term thinking on this, right? We are not short-term gainers here. And I'm, I was very, very confident that we'll be able to turn around what we've taken on. Yeah. And we're just not taking on debt. And please be rest assured that there is a very capable board sitting on top of me, uh, which is independent directors. Who, who are coming from the likes of Mr. Kampani, Mr. Shroff, uh, they're all sitting on, on the board. Dr. Narayanan is there, Mr. Punja is there. So these are people who are uh, well wishers of the company and who have seen industry. And uh, with my father along there, I think we took a very, very good strategic uh, decision to go in for this. Um, and I still believe it, uh, as I said, it's a strategic, uh, very good rationale. And you could see that uh, uh, the synergies that we were going to get out of this merger was as high as $120 million. So all in all, I still believe it's a very good fit. Uh, I cannot sit on my disappointments and I need to move forward because on 1st of January, I started moving. And uh, I can tell you, once Europe opened up, yeah. On the 7th of Jan, there were teams from India uh, and I was having VCs with all of them to gear them up, put energy inside them and say, okay guys, next step, plan B, get to Eastern Europe, start seeing sites, we're getting into a manufacturing uh, green field, don't worry about inorganic, that will come, What will what, whatever happens, happens, but let's just go in our direction. So, so you know, again, uh, if, if I would have sat back disappointed, the team would be demotivated. No, I don't think today we have time even to blink. If I blink, competition is sitting right outside, outside my gate. And, uh, and in this small world of tires, I think we need to move very fast in where we want to get to. On that note, let's just take another very quick break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go away. Given the uncertainty that I, that is there currently, I think everyone's just holding back and waiting for the right time to make that investment. So I'm pretty bullish about India.